Hi everyone, welcome my Mahjong friends. So glad you can join me on this Tuesday evening and we're gonna get right into it. So if you're here, I would love if you could give me a thumbs up at the end of this video or you can share with your friends or even um, subscribe so that you won't miss anything as I post new videos and go live. Tonight we're gonna be talking about um, what makes you so frustrated when making decision and it's really due to the lack of being familiar with the card. I'm going to go through a few things and then we're going to practice on I Love Maj and I'll ho hopefully help you get better at making decisions. So to ease your frustration, part of again is not knowing the card. So familiarize yourself with the card, learn the 10 categories, that's this year for 2023. Also, know what are the concealed hands so you don't play them open. And some people say never to play them. I love concealed hands, and so I encourage you to play them. Let the tiles lead you to the hand that uh, you should play. Try to read the parentheses, not when you're playing, what off playing, because when you're playing, you're trying to uh, pay attention to other things. Read the parentheses on a day when you can sit and take some time to understand each hand. Try to build all the hands. And I Love Maj has a great uh, practice thing called Build the Hands. You can go on there and build each hand. If you go back to some of my past lives, I show you how to build hands. And um, familiarize yourself with the easier hands to make. And that's um, every hand on the card as long as you have the tiles to match. But an easier hand to make, I call them simple hands, are those that don't require pairs or singles so that you can use jokers. That's the pattern of 3-4-3-4. Three, four, three, four. And if you take a quick look, if you grab your 2023 card, and um, an example of that, 4 6 eight, line number 3, is that pattern of 3-4-3-4. Three, four, three, four. So that is an easier hand to make meaning you're not waiting for a pair or a single. And again, I call them simplistic hands. There's also another example in consecutive run, line number two, which is in the middle of your card. And those types of hands are all over the card. Um, I'm going to be putting out a video in the next couple of weeks all about patterns. Patterns are an easy way to learn the card also. Also, try to study the card when you're not playing. And I'm not asking you to memorize the hands. I just want you to become familiar with how they are built. And that means looking over maybe a category each day and understanding what's in each category. For example, if I'm playing the 2468 category, I'm collecting every 2468 tile, regardless of suit, plus flowers and dragons. If I should get a wind, I'm not keeping that tile because it's not in the 2468 category. Don't let other tiles confuse you or frustrate you when trying to figure out a hand to play. And the best way is to play, play, play. And that means playing online or playing with friends, or you can play a game just yourself. Um, it's called solitaire. And it's uh, the same concept is on I Love Maj in their exercise room called the Charleston Practice. So you can practice there. And that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to practice and I'm going to show you that. I Love Maj has also other exercises which helps you learn the card. They have, again, we talked about build a hand, the Charleston Practice, what hand is that? And that what hand is that is a great way um, to learn where you can switch hands. And finally, they have Majal, which is a daily practice of, like, Wordle. You can go on and practice daily and figure out the hand. It's missing tiles, and you have to fill it in. Tips to improve your gameplay on I Love Maj is try to watch YouTube videos on my channel. My channel is called Maj on Class. You can subscribe below. Or you can watch how-to videos on I Love Maj. You can practice in the exercise room that I just mentioned, the four different exercises. I think it's one of my favorite parts of I Love Maj. It's a great tool to familiarize yourself with the card and to improve your skills. 
choose the right level of bots when you decide to go in and play online to practice. You have um, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. Beginner is very um, forgiving and that they pass things that maybe um, an advanced player wouldn't normally pass. And the um, intermediate level is a little challenging. That's where I play most of the time. I can't imagine playing advanced. They have a lot of strategy. Those bots are super smart. So take time and play with the bots. And then take your time when you're playing with the bots to decide on decisions on if you should call something or not. Think about strategy. If I call this tile, am I giving somebody else an opportunity to take my joker and things like that. Use the suggested hand mode they have on the left hand corner. They have, you can do suggested hands. Try to decide what hand you're playing first and then look at what they suggest. Maybe um, you miss something. Now, the way I teach is I don't tell you to pick a specific hand on the onset of the game. I suggest to just pick a category. So keep that in mind when you're using the suggested hand um, practice. So um, again, um, if you could and you would like to, and I suggest you do it, go over to I Love Maj and practice. And they give you a three week trial, see how you like it. Use the code CB. Um, normally it's for two weeks. I'm getting it upgraded for you for three weeks. So use the code CB and join. And if you're already a member um, or your, your three week trial is up, join. It's just $6 a month. That's just maybe one coffee that you could give up for the week and you can join there. It's um, great to be a member on there. There's lots of things um, as we already talked about and um, it gives you an advantage over your friends when you're practicing on I Love Mush. So let's go on over and try uh, I Love Mush. So once you're in I Love Mush, you're going to go to Play Game Launch and we're going to go into the exercise room. As I mentioned, here are the four different things you can do. Tonight, I want to teach you how you can do solitaire. Now, you can do solitaire at home with your tiles, or you can just pop on here and do the Charleston practice. To do solitaire at home with your tiles, you're going to pick 13 tiles, and then you're going to set up the Charleston. You're going to set up um, six rows of three. And you're going to set that off to the side. And that's going to be your Charleston that you pick up tiles and discard tiles. Um, I have another video where I explain that. So look for that on my YouTube channel. Here, we're going to do it on the computer. And we're going into Charleston practice. And we're going to hit the uh, start the exercise. Now, this is not going to play a full game. This is just teaching me. Uh, decision-making processes to be faster at picking a, um, a category at the start of the game. We'll run through a couple of these and then we'll go ahead and play a game. I'm going to go a little slower tonight in this part so that you can understand how to play it. We're going to sort by suit. We'll look for our pairs. We have pairs of fives and pairs of fives. So one of the things you should be doing again is recognizing where can you play fives. And I'm going to go through the card real quick to show you what I do in my head mentally. I start at 2023 20, on the left, and we can't use fives there. We can't use fives in 2, 4, 6, 8. We can use fives in any like numbers. So we'll keep all our fives. And if we had dragons or flowers, we would also keep that. In the addition hands, we cannot use fives. We can use fives in quints. So we have fives and fives. In this example, we would use north and we have jokers. So that might be a good spot to play. We can use fives in consecutive run, but it has to be re, um, fives and fives. So there's a couple of hands where you use uh, multiples of fives. It's um, we're on consecutive run, line number six. So you can have four, five, four, five, or you can have five, six, five, six. And the one right underneath that we can also use it would be flowers and the numbers three, four, five, five. So those are some ideas where you can play. And then continuing on, we can use fives in one, three, five, seven, nine. Now in that particular category, there's just one hand that uses multiple fives and that's line number six. 
So we would have to have the numbers 1, 3 in a different suit and 5, 5 in um, the opposite other two suits. Continuing on in Winds and Dragons, there's no uh, like numbers hand in Winds and Dragons. In 3, 6, 9, we cannot use 5s. Now in singles and pairs, uh, we could use uh, pairs of 5s in line number 2. You would have to play 4-5-4-5 four, five, four, five, or 5-6-5-6. Five, six, five, six. So um, it eliminates some categories, but let's just focus on like numbers and maybe keep 4-5-4-5. Uh, four, five, four, five. And let's get rid of upper numbers. So we could get rid of this 8, this 9, and we don't want to pass two nines. So let's pick something else. So let's pick a 2. The lower so we're going from either um, end of the number line we're getting rid of the high numbers and the super low we're kind of in the middle and we're going to do our first right now before you pass again I didn't really pick a specific category I was just introducing you to where fives can be used I would already have determined in my head those specific categories where it can be, be used so like numbers Quince, consecutive, one, three, five, seven, nine, and singles and pairs. Now, I'm not picking any of those yet. I'm just eliminating the ones that wouldn't fit with it in those categories. You can do suggested hand here, which would tell you the best hand to play based on the current tiles you have. So let's undo this and let's see where they cho choose. So they're saying to play consecutive run, and they're saying that 4-5, four, 4-5 five, four, five hand would I also suggested. They also suggest doing four flowers and fives, fives, fives. They said do a run all in one suit. So some of them I don't always agree with because I'm trying to stay in one category and with the best that I have. So if you look at them, these are all consecutive, CR stands for consecutive run. So they're telling you to collect around the fives. And again, I like using my multiples. So some of these I wouldn't use because you're not using both sets of fives. You're gonna to have to get rid of them. So I like number one, the four, five, four, five. I think that is our strongest and I'm going to hopefully work towards that or a like numbers hand or quint. We have no idea what we're gonna get past. So again, let's get rid of the eight, the nine, and the two. First right. We picked up another five. So here we have four, five, four, five maybe. We can get rid of the eight, the six, and the nine. I'm thinking I might, no, I was gonna keep the six and get rid of the eight, but I don't wanna do two eights. So this is our first across. We picked up another five. So let's get rid of the nine. And I don't think we're gonna play a quint because we, I don't know, we'll see. But let's get rid of the west and the eight. This is the first left. And if you read here, you can do a blind pass. You can do zero to three tiles. So if I wanted to keep this west, I could. I'm really just trying to make my hand better. So I'm gonna get rid of it. I picked up a two and eight and a south. We're gonna continue the Charleston because I'm still not 100% sure what hand I'm playing. So I'm gonna get rid of the eight, the two and the south. This is my second left. I picked up a seven, eight and north. So we're gonna get rid of those. Oh, I picked up a north, excuse me. I'm gonna back that up. <laughs> so we can go ahead and try for um, a quint with fives with north. Not sure I want to do that, but why not, right? We could try that. Let's get rid of this four. I'd rather keep the north. And again, we can back it all up and see what they suggest. They're saying to play flowers with like numbers. They're also saying to play four, five, four, five. I kind of like living on the edge sometimes and I like to challenge myself. So I like the quint. I'm gonna try this and see what happens. Maybe we'll get the four back. This is a cross, our second cross. We picked a three and eight, a two. Let's get rid of that. This is our last right.
We picked a two, an eight, a seven. We don't need that. This is courtesy, so we did three. And then our final ending, uh, we got a nine and an east. Oh, and we got a four. Or, oh, sorry, we already had that four. Sorry, we already had it earlier. We picked up a dragon. So they're telling us to play the closed hand of fives. But again, I wouldn't get so specific. I would still be trying to play either a quint. So I have a couple hands in mind right now. I have quint as my number one choice. I don't have to make a decision. I have at least two tiles that I don't need, the east and the nine. I also have consecutive run. I can play four, five, four, five. And then I have like numbers, either line one or line two, depending again, what tiles I get. This is only practice. Um, it ends right here. So you can replay it if you want to do with the same tiles. You can try to do something else. But I think we made some pretty good decisions and I think we have a very good hand to go into the game with. I wanna practice again and I'm gonna hit next um, to get all new tiles. Again, we have two tiles that we would want to get rid of before we decide what we're going to play. If we pulled another north, I definitely would try to play Quint. We have the extra joker to use with one of our fives and I would like to try that. If the Quint didn't come together, you can always back into one of the other hands. So let's try uh, a new set. Um, and we'll see what we can do there. Another thing, I kind of was talking, but it keeps track of your time and how long it's taking you to make a decision. So with myself talking, it took me um, seven minutes to make that decision. And so we wanna do that a little faster next time. And uh, each time when you're practicing, you should try to do the Charleston a little faster. So it took me seven minutes to do the Charleston. I'm sure I do it way faster than that. It's just that I was talking to you this evening. So let's do next group of tiles. If you have any questions about any of this, please pop it in the chat. I'd be more than happy to answer. Tonight we have one of my channel members with me tonight. Hi, Kathy. Thank you for joining me and thank you for supporting me. I appreciate it, Kathy. Um, you can become a channel member and join below and um, it uh, offers support as I continue to use my YouTube channel. Okay, we're gonna sort by suit, and we're gonna look at our pairs. Our pairs are nines, sevens, and sixes. Wow, so we can play six, seven, eight, nine. Immediately I see that, so that's a consecutive run. So I'm going to collect all six, seven, eight, nines. Again, I have no idea what I'm going to get, so we're gonna get rid of the one, the two, and a south or an east, I'm gonna get rid of the south. We picked up another nine and we picked up a seven. Remember, I'm collecting six, seven, eight, nine. I'm gonna get rid of the five and the east for sure. Now I have to go into the category and pick which hand I wanna play. I will pick a hand where I use the most of my multiples. So my multiples are six, seven, and nine. So I want to be find a hand that I can use all three. So six, seven, if I had a different eight, I could play uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I am not going to use this nine, and I'm probably not gonna use this nine or this seven or the flower, but I'm going to just get rid of these for the over. I picked up another nine. Oh, we got another nine. <laughs> we have another pair. So double nines, we can play seven, eight, nine, nine. So let's get rid of the five, the seven. And I'm doing something that everybody always says don't do, and that's to pass a flower. If you, your first objective is to make your hand, if you don't need it, Pass it. Yes, you can be helping somebody else, and then maybe keep track. Did that person actually use the flower you passed? If you didn't want to pass a flower, you could do a blind pass, but I think eventually you would end up having to pass the flower anyway. So this is our first left. I'm going to pass flower. 
I picked up two threes and a one. I'm going to continue because I have three tiles. Nothing across. This is my last right. And I picked up another nine and I have an eight, six, seven, eight. I don't think we need that. So I think I'm gonna get rid of all three of these. This is a cross courtesy. I ended up picking up a seven, a one, a three. I was hoping that we could play um, six, I think, it, oh, I was hoping to play seven, eight, nine, nine, which is um, the second from the bottom in consecutive run, but that's okay. We have a good hand. It looks like we're playing six, seven, eight, nine, which is the second hand in consecutive run. Now, that time I did it much quicker because I wasn't talking at much, that much. I did forget to show you what they wanted me to play. So let's do this one more time. I'm not used to doing that um, because I play uh, faster than the computer sometimes. So I'll make sure they show you what to play. And actually here they're telling you to play six, seven, eight, nine line number two in consecutive run. And that's what I had thought from the onset of the game. Again, I would prioritize my discards. I would get rid of these three tiles before I pick what actual hand I'm playing. Don't shut yourself off. If we should happen to pick up eight cracks, I would keep up, uh, sorry, not eight cracks. Let me back up. Yes, eight cracks. If we pick up eight cracks, I would play seven, eight, nine, nine, and that would be using the most of my multiples. So let's do one more time. We're gonna sort by suit. We have a pair of sixes. Sixes are fun tonight. They want us to play sixes. So we have a nice little run, six, seven, eight, nine, which is just what we played. Let's do it again. We're gonna keep all high numbers. If you did not wanna keep a run, you could play two, four, six, eight, and maybe we wanna do that. We don't have any twos. So let's play six, seven, eight, nine, and two, four, six, eight. We can play them together. We can get rid of a one a seven, and a west. We picked up a nine, a west, and a dragon. Now in two, four, six, eight, there is a hand, two and eight with opposite dragons, but we're not playing that, so we can get rid of the red. They picked, we picked up a five, so now we have a little run going, four, five, six, a one and a three we don't need, and we don't need this one. I know we're passing two ones, but they're in two different suits. We picked up another red dragon. We're going to continue. We don't need these three tiles. And let me back this up. I keep forgetting to see what they are telling us to play. So you can reveal your hand here. They're saying to play uh, line number two with a run of four, five, six, seven. And here it is over here. They have a lot of hands in consecutive run. If you click on them, they'll sort the tiles below and tell you what to keep. This one would be three, four, five, six. This one would be keeping five, six, seven, eight, and you're missing the nine. So, and here it tells you how many tiles you have towards it. So I'm working on hand number one right now. I still think I would, I personally would keep, let's close this. I personally would keep all of the bands with the green dragon and the flower. There's also the opportunity to play a closed hand so we can see where we're going here. I'm gonna get rid of the red, the one, and the eight. We picked a nine, I'm gonna keep the seven. The five I'm gonna get rid of and the four. And if you didn't like this, um, you can pull it back and pick something else. Hi, Diane. Uh, yes, quints are so fun to do. I agree, I love doing a quint. So there is the quint hand. You can do line number two, but it has to be the numbers two, three, four, five. Um, we don't have that right now, but uh, prior we had a quint hand that was fun. We could have tried for.
So let's pass this. This is our cross. Now we're on our last right. Again, I think I'm going to keep this two if I can. If not, I'll whittle it down. And um, I'm going to get rid of a five, a three. And now I guess I can't keep the two. So let's see. We could play line number three. It's two numbers in a row. So let's use our multiples, six, seven, with matching dragons with two flowers. That's a possibility. We could play the closed hand in two, four, six, eight. It's two flowers, the number two, four, six, and eight with dragons. But you see, we're not using our sevens. I want to use my sevens. We could play the closed hand in consecutive run. We could do five, six, seven. We have our pairs and eight. Ooh, I like that a lot. I like closed hands. So I would probably start whittling away on either side of my bands. So I'm going to get rid of the two. And then we have three tiles to get rid of. We could even jump all the way up to consecutive run the top line. We have our pairs of nines. We don't have our fives, but we could see what happens if we get them. Now, again, you could do suggested hands, and they're telling you to play the top line in consecutive run. I personally like the closed hand because I like playing them. They're so fun to do, and I would play... Um, they're telling you to play six, seven, eight, nine. I think I would play, um, I would keep the five and maybe play five, six, seven, eight, because I like having the pairs. But you don't have to make that choice. You can get rid of these three tiles and you can keep the five. So we'll get rid of three. This is our courtesy. And then we get, oh, we got. Um, oh no, we didn't get the five. They moved it over because they wanted us to play six, seven, eight, nine. Um, I'm going to keep the five. Prioritize your discards. We have three tiles to get rid of before we make a decision. If I cannot get the flower for some odd reason, I'm going to move up to hand number two, which is a safety hand, and play six, seven, eight, nine, all in one suit. So this is a game of solitaire that you can go through and practice making decisions and maybe you said oh maybe I should have changed that decision you can go back and replay with the same tiles and change your decision it's a great way to increase your speed and a great way to make decisions I did it this time in four um, almost five minutes so decreased my time by two minutes and I wasn't talking as much and again I do it much faster this is how fast you should be doing the Charleston. You don't have to spend all the time thinking, oh, should I keep this? Shouldn't I keep it? I decided what category to play, and I decided to keep those tiles in that range, in that category. I wasn't second guessing really much of anything. So we're going to go ahead and go on now and do the same process, but now we're going to play a full game. So this was like playing solitaire with yourself to help increase your speed and also make decisions. So I'm going to exit here and we're going to go up and we're going to play a game, official game, intermediate, and we're going to play with bots. Sort by suit. Now we're in the official game. Of course, we have no pairs. <laughs> so you have to look at your tiles and think, what do I have most of? And in this case, we have a little of everything. Um, we have a lot of low numbers. And you can resort this at any time. You could sort by rank. It's just for me, it's not easy for me to see. But here, it's easy to see we have a lot of low tiles and not a lot of high. And by doing this, I just saw we have one and nine in the same suit. And then um, we don't have three, five, seven in the same suit. I was thinking of playing odds. One and nine, we don't have three, five, seven. There's the odd hand, nine, number seven, one, three, five, seven, nine, line number seven. It's one and nine in the same suit. And then three, five, seven, but we don't have any pairs. We could play wins. We have a lot of wins. Um, but not enough. We don't have any pairs and that makes it so difficult. So now you're going to see, um, I think we'll keep all the low numbers and let's get rid of these high numbers. Let's play some sort of consecutive run. 
The minute you get a new pair, that's when um, you start making decisions. No pairs. So a nine. I like this four, five, six. Maybe we should try some sort of wind with a run. No pairs yet. Four, five, six, three, four, five, six. Let's keep three, four, five, six. It's not good to pass two ones, but I want to, I don't have any pairs yet. I'm trying to keep my options open. If I take back one of the ones, then I'm passing two nines. It's not the best pass, but it is what it is. Maybe we could take this back and pass this nine. It doesn't matter. Okay, sort by suit again. Nope. Oh, we have pairs of ones. Sure. How's that going to help us? We just passed our one. <laughs> Um, let's whittle away at the top end so we can get rid of, we have ones. We did have a two, I think. One, two, three, four, five. Maybe get rid of the six. This four is an oddball. And I want to get rid of this six also. Here's another one. We can continue. We're going to get nine, eight, and five. I'm not why I'm not sure why I'm keeping these wins. I think they're messing me up. Four, five. We have one. We need a two, three, four. Let's get rid of the seven. Let's get rid of these wins. Then we have oh we have another east. We could do east and west with ones. Let's get rid of the nine, the six, and the two. Oh, we got a west. We could do east and west with a run. So we have three, four, five, or let's get rid of three tiles. I'm gonna get rid of a one. So you only need two ones and one, two, three. A four and a red. I picked up another west. So we could do east and west with a run. We're into the game. So I'm thinking of some sort of run, east and west with one, two, three. So we don't need this four, five, or we could do east and west with three, four, five. Let's get rid of the nine. Agatha called her four flowers right out of the gate. I'm waiting for tiles to dictate where I should play. I do have pairs of east and west. I'm not sure exactly. Um, somewhere maybe in the winds. I'm not calling for anything because I'm not quite ready. I'm going to keep this. I might even keep the white. Maybe we can play two, three, four, or one, two. Let's get rid of this five. Oh, Joe's got fives. Now, Wes is playing a 1-3 hand. Where is 1-3? Okay, Joe has 5-7. So, the same suit, 5-7, you would think to look in 1-3-5-7-9, but there's no Kongs of 5s and Kongs of 7s there in the same suit. So he's playing consecutive run, um, flower, 5, a Kong of 5s, a Kong of 6 bams, and Kong of 7 bams. Wes is playing 1-3, and 1-3... Um, again, look in one, three, five, seven, nine. I don't believe there's pungs of ones and pungs of threes in the same suit. There is not. So where are there pungs of ones and pungs of threes in the same suit? And that would be consecutive run line number two. And by doing this, you're teaching yourself how to learn hands and you're getting more familiar with the card. We're going to do a joker swap here. We put the seven. Do not miss out on those joker swaps. Every time you pick a tile and rack it, pause and make sure that you don't have 
look around the board to make sure you can't do a joker exchange. And here we can across the way. I think I kind of like um, the one. So let's get rid of the four. Oh, Joe's playing four, five, six, seven. Oh boy, that almost gave him Mahjong. Good thing he wasn't ready yet. Let's keep whittling away. I'm trying to maybe play a wind hand. Maybe we could even play 2023 with East and West. I'm going to keep the two because I think Wes is playing one, two, three, four. Now I can't pay 2023 20, with dots because here's a two, here's a two, and here's a two. So that's over with. So that'll be my next tile to get rid of. got a north. Maybe we're playing uh, line number five, which is flower, flower, which there's already a flower out, but we could use a joker with it. North, two east, we need three west and four south. No souths are out. Let's get rid of this one. We can play north, east, west, south with dragons. Let's get rid of this one crack, a uh, one bam, excuse me. No, oh, we don't have to worry about it. But you saw how patient I was. My hand was evolving. Um, I was kind of thinking east, west with 2023, 20, but then all the twos went out because I had the three. That didn't work, so then I evolved to line number five, which was four flowers, north, two east, Three west, four south. Again, we needed all the south, so I had to wait a little bit. And then it also evolved to line number six. I thought, well, maybe I could use the dragons with um, the winds. So, um, although I think all the norths were out, so I should have went to line number three, east and west with the dragon. I didn't have any other dragons, but again, the game was still going until now. Of course, Joe won. So Joe won four, five, six, seven. So that was the um, hand I had thought he was, in, well, initially I thought he was going for two flowers, five, six, seven, but then um, he called for the four, so then it was four, five, six, seven. So I do see now what hand Joe was going for. And then Wes was going for that one, two, three, four. And um, Agatha was playing uh, four flowers with um, sevens for any like numbers. So let's move on and start our next game. Sort by suit. And we have a pair of sevens. We have five, seven, nine. So let's keep all the upper odds. So let's get rid of the six, the two, and the four. The four, the two, and, oh, we have a new pair of fives. We have four fives. I think we could do four, five, six, seven. Let's get rid of the one. We're keeping upper numbers. We're keeping the six. The eight. Now we have a pair of west. Don't let that throw you off. We're not collecting west. They're not in consecutive run. We can tell you four, five, six, seven, five, seven, seven, nine. And this green dragon, I don't think is helping us. Let's get rid of that. We picked up another seven. And we're going to continue. We can do north, four, and six. I think we're going to stay with a five, seven, nine hand. We picked up a nine. You can get rid of the three, the four, and the west. 
We have a four, a one, and a two that we don't need. And then we picked up another nine. And we can do um, three tiles. I don't think we're gonna use this seven. Did not pick a hand yet. Um, we could play with opposite dragon here. We can play seven, nine, five, seven with opposite dragon. But again, we have at least two tiles to get rid of before we're ready to start calling for anything. Maybe he's playing two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight, same suit, four and six isn't there. Here's the five bam, one five bam just went out. We're not ready yet. We don't know what hand we're playing. Oh, here's our seven, we needed that. Here's a five, I don't think we need that. Here's our nine. So let's play five, seven, seven, nine. So let's get rid of the nine. Kathleen was mentioning that the bots like consecutive run. I think they do too. Um, they're programmed to really pay attention to the tiles. Um, so depending on what I pass, like I was, I think one of my first passes to Wes was a two, four, six. So maybe he's playing two, four, six, eight or something. Um, again, uh, four and six in the same suit isn't over there. So he must be in a consecutive run. Okay, Agatha has three green dragons. Let's get rid of the white first. Three green dragons are just about anywhere on the card. Oh, another white. See how I keep pulling tiles to the right to prioritize my discards. I'm looking at line number five, but I'm also looking at line number two. I think we're going to let our flower go. We're a little over the halfway point. I'm going to let it go. I don't want anybody getting it at the end if they need it. Nobody's playing a wind with east, so I can let my east go. Doesn't look like we're playing with reds. I think two red dragons are out. So I don't have enough tiles. So let's move up to line number two. I need four nine dots, so I'm going to call this. Now I don't need this red anymore. I have my sevens, I have my fives, I have my seven dots, I have my five bams. I need seven, uh, seven bams. Don't miss out on a joker exchange. Now there's one seven, I can't call it, I need four. Uh, we were doing so good, I thought we were gonna get it. So Agatha won, she was playing a great hand. She was playing, um, it's called a knit hand where you have um, the suits, uh, rotating so you have cracks bams cracks bams it's a um the bams and the dragons will match and the threes and the nines will match so congratulations to agatha wes was playing uh two flowers four five six line number five all in one suit joe was playing four flowers seven 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 line number one so let's start our next game 
sort by rank and you gotta look for your pairs. Now dragons are in every hand category so it's a little hard to focus on that but we do have a bunch of cracks so maybe we can play a crack hand consecutive run with matching dragons or we could play like numbers. Let's get rid of a four, a one, and a nine. Hi, Charlene. Thanks for joining us tonight. Charlene's getting in late, but she's saying hi to us. Thank you. Six, a three, and seven, eight, nine. Let's get rid of the five. A seven. Oh, we're picking up those winds. Maybe we can play a wind hand with the dragons. We need two norths and two south. That looks kind of promising. Two norths and two souths. I'm talking about line number six. Let's play that wind hand. And if you're seeing, I'm whittling it down. Now I have like numbers with dragons. I'm keeping that in mind. Ooh, we got our west. Ooh, I like that hand now. It looks good. That's hand number six in winds and dragons. See how I keep whittling it down? You don't need that west, but I am going to keep it. Maybe we'll switch to somewhere else. Nobody likes the uh, dragons tonight. Oh, we got another east, east, west. We could switch hands and we could play the top hand, a win hand, or we can play a dragon hand. Let's just do two tiles. So most often I'm always doing three tiles. I hardly ever do uh, one tile or two tiles. Tonight I did because we were whittling down our hand. Don't forget, Joker, Joker over here, you're keeping flowers in mind and the one bam to do a Joker exchange. I'm not going to call anything until I can get more tiles towards a specific hand. And obviously, I do need to have some jokers. Oh, somebody got a flower already. I did get rid of the three over the pair because maybe we can use them for a joker swap. Oh, maybe West needs the nines. Huh. Missed out on those flowers. Oh, didn't, West didn't need the nines. Now we could start calling for things, but we're not quite set yet in our hand. I'm going to let this west go. We could play the top hand and have three west, so I can let one go. Let's see what happens. If, oh, another south. I need another joker before I like calling for something. Oh, we could do a joker swap over here. That will help our hand. Let's do that. So now I'm going to play east and west, three of them, north and south, four. Six bam, we don't need. One of the things you want to know, if there's four flowers and three dragons, the only hand they can be playing is hand number three in 2023. So it's a little dangerous to get rid of this white, but I'm going to get rid of it now rather than later. Thank God he didn't need it. I'm going to call for my east. I want three of them. Again, I'm going to get rid of the three because I don't want to give him Mahjong. He might need the green. I'm going to get rid of that. 
You want to get rid of it sooner than later. Oh, we didn't even take West in consideration. West playing six, seven, eight in three different suits. Congratulations to him. That's line number five. Uh, Joe was playing consecutive run, one, two, one, two, line number six. And Agatha was playing line number three, 2023. 20, she needed a two bam. Um, so we were doing all right with our wins. I had picked to play line number one, the first half. Start a new one. If anybody has any questions, please pop them in the chat. I'd be happy to answer. We have pairs of fours and twos. Now, twos and fours in two different suits is not so great because in two, four, six, eight, where they both can be used, two and four must always be in the same suit. However, there is line number four in two, four, six, eight. You can have two and four in the same suit, four and six in a different suit, and eights. We don't have any eights. I don't think we've tried a two, four, six, eight. Maybe we did once, but let's try a two, four, six, eight. So let's get rid of everything that's not a two, four, six, or eight. And again, you see how quick I'm doing it? It's not a two, four, six, or eight. I'm getting rid of it. Now, there is dragon hands. Uh, it's line number five. It's opposite dragon. We have mixed suits. I don't think we're going to do that. And then line number six is all one suit with matching dragon. I guess we could keep it. We could get rid of this six. We also could have got rid of the white too. We could play two and eight with opposite dragons. Oh, now we got the four. Two, four, and eight. That's not the right eight. So let's continue. And we can get rid of these dragons, I think. We're not going to be playing with them. Let's get rid of the red, the one, and the white. We picked up another four. We can keep our fours. Maybe we can play line number two. Two, four, six, eight, all in one suit with fours and fours. Let's get rid of this red. East one, one. And then we have these three is perfect. A two, a south, and a west. We're gonna see if we could play line number two, two, four, six, eight with fours. We're missing sixes in, we're missing sixes in the cracks. Just take a quick peek at singles and pairs, two, four, six, eight. We could probably play that. We have two, four, six, eight. And cracks and two, four, six, eight, and dots. We can look at look at that. We do have a joker, but it's okay to get rid of a joker if you want to play for a bigger hand. It's the first eight dot to go out. Oh, he has our sixes. That stinks. In the close hand, we need a pair of sixes. In Line number two, we only need one six. If we pick up that six, we are still golden. I'm not calling anything yet. I don't think we're doing too good tonight. We haven't won one hand yet. But I hope I'm teaching you how to change hands and to be patient. Oh, here's the six here, two, four, six. Let's get rid of this six. Not playing the red.
picked up another Joker. Okay, we played two, two, four, six, eight. My number two I was looking at. We need to have a six. We wouldn't need this four. And then we could have four, four. The problem is they have sixes across from us. And if they throw out that one six, we're done for. Let's start whittling away. Let's see what else we could play. Two, four. My number four is two, four, four, six. Oh, we could get rid of the flower. We're not going to use this flower. <laughs> of course. Well, we got the eight. Let's get rid of this four. We're looking for the six. Oh, here's the eight. Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight in one suit. Let's look. Two, four, six, eight in all one suit. Can we do that? We have two we can call for. We need a four, a six. We need a lot for two, four, six, eight all in one suit. They didn't get rid of the four. We could play two, four, six, eight with fours. Let's start getting rid of these eights. Let's get rid of this four. I don't know what hand I'm playing yet. I think all the two dots have gone out. I think I have to use these for the twos. I think all our twos are out. Try to keep it a wall game. If you can't win, you let no one else win. Maybe we could play the closed hand. Are all the whites out? Only one white's out. Oh, you know what, Roxy? I completely forget about those addition hands. You were right. We could have played the addition hand two and four. Uh, we have two and four. We could have did that. I forget that category. You know, that's new this year, so I'm not used to it. But good idea, Roxy. I think this might be a wall game. I'm hoping. Unless I give it to someone. <laughs> so at the end of the game, there are zero tiles left. I'm not going to win Mahjong. Um, you are to discard a Joker to let no one win, and then it is a wall game. And everybody gets points for that on this uh, platform. So Kathleen mentions, it is useful to know that even great players like me, oh, thank you, don't win a game every session. I think a lot of players forget that they are not expected to win every game. Yes, that is true. You want to win every game, but you can't. And when you can't, you play good defense so you don't let others win. And that's what we did tonight also. Thank you, everyone, for joining me tonight. I look forward to next week. Again, look out for some of my videos on my uh, site called Mahjong Class. Subscribe below. Give me a thumbs up. Share the video with a friend. And I'll look forward to seeing you next week. And I would like to talk maybe about patterns. And hopefully you'll catch my video about that. Have a great night. Thanks, all. Bye-bye.